right, here we are, NAMM 2012. We're standing here at the Ernie Ball booth. We're talking to uh, Steve Morris, trying to catch him here real quick before he goes and plays a performance. Uh, but we just wanted to see what he's doing and catch up with him really quick. <sighs> is, is that a question? No, it's kind of like a lead in. <laughs> all right, well, there's all kinds of things going on. I'm on doing some shows with Steve Morris' band. Deep Purple is doing another tour starting in eight days. Uh, got an album coming out in March with Flying Colors. That's with Mike Portnoy on drums, Neil Morse, same last name, keyboard player from Spock Spear. No relation. Writer, yeah, no relation, but one of my friends. And he's a fantastic writer, singer, uh, multi-instrumentalist. Myself, Dave LaRue, and our, our singer, Casey McPherson, from a band called Alpha Rev, and Endosheen also. He's uh, He's the younger guy that, that's got the a, a different attitude toward the songwriting because of his age. And so we mix all that together and it's a, a prog rock stuff that sounds uh, easy to listen to. So we don't know what to call it, but it's called Flying Colors. How about Bedroom Progressive? <laughs> it's not it's not as intense as, as a normal Neil Morse, um, Mike Portnoy, Steve Morse combination would would um, make you think. It's 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 got a lot. There's a lot of melody and stuff into it. It's it's very. It, we're very proud of the album. So how are you guys releasing it? Are you is it going through a label or? Yeah, it's it's uh, Mascot Records, and I'm not sure how they do it in the states. It's a European label, and. Uh, What's release date, or do you have one yet? Uh, around the end of March. Okay. Excellent. Really quickly, uh, last year you were demoing uh, the uh, Ernie Ball pickups um, that you could mix and match, you know, wirings and stuff like that. A, a year later, uh, played around a lot with it. What do you think? Well, the uh, it's called the Game Changer. They, they've they uh, improved it and, and given two different uh, presets you can do on the fly as well as all the, the, the multi-position presets you can have. And so in the computer, I have the wiring that sim simulates my guitar already, but I can also do uh, a whole nother bank of, of sounds just by tapping um, a button. And uh, that I can get like wah-wah sounds and, and uh, there's a combination of pickups and coils with one inverted that makes, that it somehow messes up the sound enough to where I can leave the volume on full distortion and play with this this particular combination, and it sounds like just it sounds a mixture between clean and distorted. Mm. Great for for parts like um, uh, you know for busy low end of the guitar, and I've never seen a preset like it. And you cannot do it unless you have uh, three different switches on a, on a regular guitar dedicated to to polarity reversal. And, and uh, it just for example, one of the things that I would have never stumbled across wiring the guitar with a soldering gun, which is the way I've always done it. Soldering to switches and saying, well this, I guess I've covered all the possibilities. And we discovered that there's a lot of possibilities in that if you consider each humbucking as two different pickups and, and you consider a number of humbuckings you can get some combinations that make a sound that you, I would have never imagined. And you can do that very quickly and not instantly. have to instantly. pull out your soldering iron and yeah, instantly. And and we've like the, you, we have some of our favorites, you know, already in a in a special area, and, that, and that's one of them. Are you using it mostly uh, yeah, live or in recording? Or are you doing it using it for both? Well, it for us it, w it was in the in the uh, demo like r research phase. And they're just now uh, getting getting it available, you know, mass mass quantities to where uh, I still have, my guitar still hasn't been built with it yet. Oh, so okay. I was using their guitar. Okay. And so we did the demo with their guitar, and right before we play, like literally one minute before we play, you go to the computer and select the pickup wiring that you want. And so my switch. Um, I have a five-way switch on on the Y2D and. And it, it, it suddenly simulates the uh, 
the, the sound of my Y2D. <laughs> Amazing stuff, huh? Yeah. I bet you can't wait to get it. Yeah. It's so are they saying they're going to have that uh, sometime soon here or for release? Um, yeah. I, I, I actually out. don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Steve, thanks for taking the yeah, time. Really thank appreciate you. it. Have a great day. Any more instructional videos? Actually, one of, one of your fans. I just did some uh, uh, some free ones for an online guitar magazine in the UK. Uh, uh, some a number of uh, lesson things there, um, and I believe their magazine is totally free. Uh, I'm looking at maybe uh, doing a, another DVD, but we haven't we haven't actually done it yet. But I have done some. Uh, some more in instructional stuff and uh, I don't know it's with the internet the way it is it's it's almost uh, I don't know it it's it's a different dynamic than than in the in the 70s or 80s when you do a DVD and, and it's only sold through the mail or at stores now the, the information is instantaneous and it's everywhere and and a lot of it's free so so there's I think there's less interest by companies, you know, willing to, that that want to put money into an investment that is basically free the instant it's released. As an established artist, though, are you finding that it liberating at all, or is it is it somewhat a hindrance to you know business and making a living? Um, I have I have split feelings about it. I like the fact that everything that if I want to learn a tune. To jam with somebody, I can go to YouTube and there it is. And as, as an artist that has hundreds of songs published, none of them are pop songs. But you know, it'd be great if I didn't always have to leave my family to go on the road right. to make a living. It'd be great if 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 those songs turned into some actual royalties. Right. But music business on, is changing. On, yeah. On the other hand, people want to see me live. They can go to a free website and instantly have all kinds of connections and links. So the internet giveth, the internet taketh. So I guess it balances out. <laughs> on that note, hey, thank you so much for taking the time. Have a good one. Thank you. Steve Morris, everybody, NAM 2012.